student takes 112 standardized tests between pre-kindergarten to the 12th grade. Standardized testing has been prevalent in all of our lives, which is why it is important to understand how it is used and how it affects us. These tests ultimately decide where many students go in life, and especially they factor into college admissions. As we will be applying to college in one or two years, it is important to understand standardized testing as it will be affecting all of us. Hello everyone, my name is Yu Chao Chang, and today I'm here with Emma Fitzpatrick and David Keller to talk to you about standardized testing. As stated by Time Magazine article, the earliest record of standardized tests was in Confucian China, where you had to prove your knowledge of Confucian poetry and philosophy to get a government job. It was then heavily used in China over the course of history. In the Western world, standardized testing did not become so prevalent until the Industrial Revolution, where these tests acted as an efficient way to test large groups of kids at once. By World War I, standardized testing had evolved to become the standard practice. These so-called army mental tests were used to assign U.S. servicemen jobs during the war effort. Originally, grade was done manually, but inefficiency of this practice caused these tests to not be worth it. In the meantime, colleges and corporations, most notably the College Board, began to establish and create standardized achievement tests to measure students' skills in various areas of study, including arithmetic, reading, and language. About two decades after World War I, the modern and popular SAT, back then known as the Scholastic Aptitude Test, was created in 1926. Originally, it was just a brief 90-minute test, which tested math and vocabulary. However, in just four years, it evolved into the modern-day test, with separate sections for math and reading. In 1936, the first automatic test grader was created. Since then, the same motive for standardized testing would remain. It would be an efficient way to measure a student's intelligence. By the end of World War II, the SAT had become largely used for college admissions. Later in 1959, the American College Testing Program, otherwise known as the ACT today, was created as a competitor for the, AC for the SAT. As more and more students wanted to pursue high levels of education, more numbers of universities sought, to, sought for college entrance exams, thus the ACT was created. The test attempted to ask students questions on their potential fields of interest and unlike the SAT, included a science section. The test grew since then and has evolved to include a writing section as well. To, th to this day, the ACT is another heavily taken test for high school students across the country. Today, standardized testing is known to practically every student in the United States and has been heavily practiced by schools. According to Education Week, over 1.7 million students took the SAT in 2015, and over 1.92 million students took the ACT in that same year. Additionally, students of other ages also participated in statewide tests, language test increase assessments, and other college entrance exams. In this study of 66 school districts across America by the Council of the Great City Schools, a typical student takes 112 standardized tests between pre-kindergarten to 12th grade. The most time preparing for these tests was found in 8th graders, whereas 10th graders were hit with the most amount of tests. In another study by the Center of American Progress, students between the 3rd and 8th grade took an average of 13 to 20 standardized tests per year in 14 various school districts. The use of standardized testing has been heavily debated on upon by students, parents, and other institutions. While some argue that standardized testing is an effective way to measure a student's ability in school and academic achievement, others argue that it is a simple waste of time. Since its first creation, standardized testing has created a highly debated controversy. Let us first examine the pros as argued by the supporters of standardized testing. Perhaps the most important idea of standardized testing is it's able to measure a student's achievement. Standardized testing focuses on core concepts and creates a way to measure a student's achievement <coughs> in basic subjects that are taught in all schools. In general, those who study and care more about the test tend to do better than those who slack off and don't study. It's not a way to measure a student's intelligence, but rather a tactic to illustrate one's hard work. Another main reason for the existence of standardized testing is that it is a way for colleges to decide which students they would like to admit and which they would not. While this is not necessarily a fair way to assess them, a student's success in school, 
Most colleges look at standardized testing when it comes to admissions. According to Peterson, around 80% of four-year colleges slash institutions still use standardized testing in college admissions, which is why it is really pivotal to understand. In a few slides, we will delve deeper into the standardized testing and its role in college admissions. Finally, standardized testing is very efficient. While it takes up a lot of students and teachers' time, it also saves time for many others. Tests are typically administered a few times a year, and hundreds of thousands of students are able to take these tests on this one particular day. And there are thousands of testing sites, and many tests are often on the one particular day, including the famous SAT subject test, which test students achieved in other areas of study besides the Common Core. As we've examined the pros of standardized testing, we'll now delve into the darker side of these assessments. The standardized testing system may seem like a good way to test students, but at the same time, it is often detrimental to the student's classroom experience and may impact them in the long run and when applying to colleges as well as to grad school. One of the main reasons why standardized testing is not desirable is because the testing is very time consuming, which can cause stress in students. Standardized testing takes time to prepare for and in doing so, students often lose time doing other normal activities that they would have done. According to a study on standardized testing, students usually spend around 20 hours studying for one standardized test. This time, studying leads to loss in sleep, which can cause teenagers, teenagers to not function or perform as well as they normally would. According to the Office of Adolescent Health, high schoolers need 9 to 10 hours of sleep every night, but with the given circumstances, standardized testing brings students less understood.